the one thing that I told Sarah was if she could think of some of the incidents of her story and try to be expressive, since she's a painter herself, mm -hmm. she knows how important that is to making the mm -hmm. painting have some feeling. Mm -hmm. The core of anti-Semitism is what Nietzsche called resentment, uh, bitterness. The Germans saw themselves as the persecuted, as the oppressed after the defeat, you know, in World War I. And they had to find a scapegoat for that. They built a whole moral of, of resentment. And the Jews became, not for coincidental reasons, of course, because there's a lot, but they were the the perfect scapegoat because of Christianity, because of the you know, whole history of anti-Judaism and so on and so forth. Nevertheless, I do believe that the core of anti-Semitism there is always a form of, you know, moral of resentment. We want to have like two faces becoming one. There's got to be a play and a symbolism between this side and that. The idea of the past being selectively presented and then filled mm -hmm. with a lot of the symbols that you have made. And we won't do anything without your approval, but we'll, sure. we'll play with a lot of possibilities sure. and then show you mm -hmm. five, six different versions and ask you for your opinion. Mm -hmm. So that she, right. that she, she was she very, made very this, strong. She made this relationship. She went over the mother's face right. and just kept I said, why? Why did that please you? And she said, it's more that that's my, my father dominated my mother, even though she was very strong. Oui, elle était très... Ma mère, si elle a fait des choses... Je, après, mon père était aveugle, alors elle faisait tout. Hein. Elle, elle, elle s'occupait, elle travaillait. Elle, il était enfin, paresseux, il était courageux. Right, mais, right. Il était aveugle, alors voilà. Mais il était quand même plus... Mm -hmm. Voilà, c'était malgré, voilà. There's going to be a mirror back here. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so there's going to be a hidden image that we can okay. see. It, it could okay. be one of your doodles or it could be something yeah. else. One of the things that yeah. you mentioned is that yeah. there is a certain problem sometimes with remembering, that sometimes you shouldn't remember, mm -hmm. and yet it is a part of you, and that you you are in a position to reveal or not reveal. Mm -hmm. um, your mom isn't, but one generation removed, to reveal or not reveal, sure. depending on how comfortable you feel That's or how personal it is. That's part of what we were playing with here, that it's, it, it is there, it's a part of you, but then it's up to you to decide. Sure, I see what you mean. You know, when, how, sure. you, how you let that exactly. be known. Mm -hmm. Why don't both of you take a look through these objects, and if something captures your attention, mm -hmm. that draws your attention, just pick it up. Mon père, lui, il était parti dans le maquis. Le maquis, c'est le yeah. résistance. Her father, her father was oh, in the resistance, resistance. the mother oui. and the two sisters in a small cabin. Oh, and one day, un jour, un soldat allemand, enters a German soldier. Il a donné un coup avec son pistolet dans, le, dans la porte. Un coup. Il est rentré avec son pied comme ça dans, par la porte. So he really, he butted it oui, open. Voilà. Ça, c'est le soldat, exactement, qui m'a donné un coup dans la porte. Yeah, the parce que... Oui. This is the American soldier that Sarah picked. And then we had to go find the German soldier. On the internet, there were six or seven German soldiers. This is the one that we picked that matched that pose. Could you also draw image du train of the train, what that might have looked like? From the, from the inside, or you looking at the window? Just what you saw from my little window. So yes, so you saw it from your the little inside. window?
We need Bruno to mm -hmm. draw something. Have your mother suggest something to you draw. She says, I want you to draw the, the line of the rail tracks. Mm -hmm. What? Train of thought. Train of thought. So these are the barbed wires, I believe. I don't remember this. No, that it's it's Probably. because of your boot, the sound of boots. Sound of so boots. So we can also, yeah, the sound yeah. of marching boots. Okay, Bruno, the, your mom's picture was a, a more of a horizontal, vertical thing. We twisted this. Yes. And it's kind of a square. And the reason why we twisted it because it's going to be shown next to your mom. It's going to be exhibited together. Okay, and it's similar but different. And the idea of putting on this angle is a little bit like the swastika sign. Uh -huh. uh, without putting a swastika, the idea sure. of the decor and this moving thing, the idea of yeah. the idea of uh -huh. moving. So it's a very um, a suggestive idea. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, but it feels right. And in other words, you're in a scene playing this whole thing happened before you. Uh -huh. That's interesting because the, the French writer, Jewish writer Georges Perec was born uh, during the war, has written a book entitled W of the childhood memory, and W is the sort of cipher of his whole childhood experience and memory. W. And he plays, yeah, the W oh. is the letter, and he plays with the angles of the letters oh, to make the Star of David, or to make the swastika, or to make the SS sign. Mm -hmm. Bruno told us uh, that survival had nothing to do with intelligence, but it was the uh, roll of the dice. And that's when we got the idea of putting the dice into the picture. In addition, Bruno has a Jewish star that the Nazis made the Jews wear. He has it in his home. And there's a little hint of the star uh, in yellow right here. But if you look in the mirror, you see the star underneath. There's the thing the experience, and there are the words, that is the representations. Because we had two D in French, mm -hmm. <laughs> dice, <Yep>. die, <laughs> and... Uh, and then the English word die. And I've got the impression that memory is triggered by the process of telling the story. There is no such thing as real memory or the real thing. Mm -hmm. Lots of historians prefer the archive, the document you know, hard facts, as opposed to, to testimony, which is always suspicious, precisely because the real that the testimony is supposed to retrieve uh, is always, you know, innocently yes, innocent. betrayed. <laughs> Interpreted. Interpreted. Interpreted, mm -hmm. thank you. By the storyteller, by the witness. When you encounter an object, uh, this object uh, can lead you back to the past and resurrect an ex a very long gone experience in a profound way, in a way that factual historiography would not do. And that's why artists and writers and poets probably rely more on that sort of experience.